Hello my friends and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can stick images or videos onto any surface with individuals of 17. Yes. So without further ado, let us indulge my friends. Okay, so here we are individuals of 17. A welcome, a welcome. And we're currently in the edit page at the moment. So we're going to be, we're going to be manipulating a few clips. We're going to be doing this clip here, this clip here, this clip. And of course, lastly, this clip here. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this. So without further ado, let us indulge, let us get started. So we're gonna start off with the most practical example. It's basically kind of like a screen replacement but without green screen. So we have this clip here with a MacBook Pro, of course, and we're just gonna be putting footage inside of the screen basically. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of movement. So it wouldn't be as simple as just putting an image or a video onto the screen because of the movement, it wouldn't track and move with the movement of the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to hover over the clip that we're going to use and we're going to navigate from the edit page to, that's right, you guessed it, the fusion page because today is fusion day. I mean, not really, but you know, we're going to be using the fusion page today. So <laughs> navigate to the fusion page. So here we are in the fusion page. Your fusion tab may look a bit different to mine. So again, we're going to spend a bit of time setting this up. If you watch any of my other fusion tutorials, then you don't need to do this. Otherwise, what you're going to need to do is make sure nodes is enabled. Make sure all of these are turned off except inspector. Right now, I only have one window open. This might change later, but to get to one window, just click onto this icon right here and it will change it to a single viewer. Lastly, you can see that my nodes are quite big. We have like a square tile option. So in order to get big thumbnail nodes like this, just right click in any empty space around the node area. So right click and make sure force source tile pictures, force all tile pictures and show thumbnails. Make sure all of these are checked and then we can finally get started. Okay, so in order to do this, what essentially we're going to be doing is we're going to be tracking an area where we want to stick onto the surface. So we want to get an image or a video, we want to stick onto the surface. But in order to do that, with most of the footage, the footage is moving, right? So we have to track it. So what we're going to do is click onto our media in note and then press control space bar. You'll be presented with this pop-up here. And this pop-up here is what we're going to need to do to search for the tracker that we're going to be using. So there's actually three different trackers in DaVinci Resolve 17. There's camera tracker, planar tracker, and original tracker. What we're going to be using for this tutorial is the planar tracker. So type in track or planar and find the planar tracker and press add. And straight away, it should snap in between your media in and your media out. So media in is your footage, the planar tracker is the node in between, and media out is the output. If you cannot see the planar tracker in between these two, it may, for example, be outside these two nodes. All you need to do is hold down shift, click onto the planar tracker and drag it in between the two nodes and it should just snap into place as simple as that. Okay, perfect. The next thing we're going to need to do is go to the beginning of the clip. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning of the clip and at the right hand side, we're going to navigate to inspector. So make sure inspector is open. Now here you'll be presented with a few options. We have operation mode, tracker, motion type, output, track channel. So the first things first, you're going to see it has operation mode. We're going to leave this to track for now. The next thing you're going to see is reference time. Now the reference time is basically saying to the visual resolve, what point in this footage do we want the track to start? So if I move anywhere, for example, in the beginning of the clip and I press set in a reference time, it's going to actually start tracking at frame 1452 at this point in time, but we want it to start at the beginning of the clip. So I'm going to go right to the beginning of the timeline. And I'm just going to press set and right now. It's going to track right at the beginning of the clip. Next, we have the tracker type. I like to leave this on point. So for this tutorial, leave it on point motion type. We're going to keep it to translation and this basically adjusts for the vertical and horizontal movement. So left, right and up and down. So we're going to leave it to translation. So the next thing we're going to need to do is draw our track points. So hover over our window, as you can see right here, and I'm just going to draw around just the MacBook Pro because this is the area that I want to track. This is very important. Make sure you highlight only around the area that you want to track. And this seems to work okay for me so far. Perfect. After that's done, I'm going to go back to the right hand side near the inspector right here. You see, we have all of these points and here I'm going to press this icon here to track to end. So this is going to track forward from my reference time, which is at the beginning of the clip. And it's going to track all the way into the end using the points, which I've specified. I'm about to track to end and let's see what happens. As you can see, it's actually tracking the corners of the MacBook Pro, which is exactly what we want. And we have some pretty stable, we have a pretty stable track right now. Just like that, you can see it's keyframed and added all of the track points to our timeline, which is exactly what we want. Now, this is where things get interesting. 
So we now need to be able to add an image or video into this space and have it track using all of the points which DaVinci Resolve has just made. So how do we do that? So firstly, what we need to do is go to our planar tracker, click onto it, then go to the inspect on the right hand side, change the operation mode from track to corner pin, right? Now you're going to see we have this kind of like transform tool where you can manipulate each of the different angles, right? But you're not really seeing anything. Why is that? Well, we need a photo or video to put inside of this. So what we're going to do is go to your media pool, or if you wanted to, you can literally just go to your explorer and drag an image or a video in that way. I've actually dragged the footage from some of my old videos into my media pool right here. So I've gone to media pool, dragged the footage, dragged it into the timeline. Now to actually see the footage, you can click onto the media two, which is your footage, drag it up to this window. And as you can see, it will show the footage that way. If we want to go back to our media out, click onto the media out, drag it onto the window. And as you can see, it shows it that way. Alternatively, you can actually click onto the node you want to view and press two to view it on a viewer. Now, the reason why it's two and not one is because if you only have a single window right here, it's showing on the second display. If for example, we press this icon right here to get the dual viewer, I can actually press one on my keyboard to view something on a first viewer and two to view something on a second viewer. So if I press two, we'll go to the second viewer. So this is really useful. If for example, we have two clips like this, you can either drag it onto each viewer or you can simply just press one to show on the first viewer or two to show on the second viewer. Right now, we don't necessarily need this. So I'm going to go back to a single viewer. So we've currently tracked the footage. We've changed operation mode to corner pin and we've now dragged in a footage or video into our workspace right here. So how to get our footage to match the track points of our planar tracker. All we need to do is select onto our footage, drag the gray box, the output into the green box of our planar tracker and straight away you'll see we have this. That's right. <laughs> This looks kind of crazy, like it's kind of like video inception, me watching myself, watch a video, watch a tutorial. As you can see, it kind of looks kind of weird. Why is that? Well, we need to manipulate the point so it matches the frame of the MacBook Pro. So click onto the planar tracker. And since we changed the operation mode to corner pin, we can adjust the corners like so. And I can drag it all the way down. This is really weird. I should have chosen a different video, not a video of myself. This is really, really strange. Okay. <laughs> This is crazy. Okay. Now if I press space bar, you can see we actually have it all. There's a little bit of, of displacement there. Let's go back to our planar tracker, drag it a bit down like so. Now you can see if I press space bar, we actually have the footage tracked to the surface of the MacBook Pro. And we literally have screen replacement that simply, that quickly, really fast. Yeah. Yep. 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 Really, really quickly. And it's really, really good. Like it's really sensational. So that's the first method and probably one of the many traditional methods that you're going to be using it with, but that's not all we're going to do. We're actually going to have a lot of fun with it. So right here, we can see we have this clip here and our subject, we have a subject's heads and they're moving, right? So what we're actually going to do, we're going to stick a form of tattoo on their face. What we're going to do is go to the edit page in the edit page, select over the video that we want, navigate to the fusion page like so. And we're going to follow the exact same parameters. So here we are in a fusion page. I'm going to select over our media in, I'm going to press control space bar to get this tab open, type in planar tracker, press add. It's going to add a planar tracker. I'm going to set the reference time to the first frame, which is here. Change the motion type to translation. And then I'm just going to draw around points in the face that I want or where I want to stick the surface to, which is this area here. And just like that, we're going to press this button here to track forwards and watch it track the footage. Looking good. We're not really losing too many points. And as you can see, we have all of these tracked frames, all of these keyframes. The next thing we're going to do is add an image. So I'm going to go to my media pool. I'm going to go to my user bins, my smart bins, and we're going to find an image. So I'm going to do a airplane. I'm going to do this paper airplane, which is this design here. I'm going to close my media pool. Go back to my planar tracker and drag it over the window so I can see. And I'm next going to go to my inspector window at the top right corner, change the operation mode from track to corner pin. Now we're basically ready to stick something onto the surface. Now I'm going to click my media into. In fact, if you wanted to, you can press F2 on your keyboard to rename it. So I'm going to rename it paper plane. There we go. I'm going to drag this, the gray output into the green input of our planar tracker. And just like that, if I click onto my planar tracker, we now have the areas of the corner pin. So I can literally drag this and position it very strategically in a perspective which kind of works. 
don't want to make it too too big because it looks crazy okay i don't want to spend a million years fixing this but i think this could probably work and let's play it back and see what it looks like and just like that look <laughs> we have an image stuck onto our surface as the subject is moving so too is the image which we've plugged in and what's interesting about this is the fact that since we've actually isolated this particular area with the planar track and the corner pin i can get rid of this paper airplane and i can add something else and say for example i wanted to add this this wave drag it into the green output and just like that it's in the same position and it looks a bit crazy but and i'm about to tell you a secret right now this is not all we can do I'm going to replace this image one more time. Okay, so now we have this tiger, right? We can actually add more adjustments and corrections to this because remember, my friends, we are in the fusion tab. And what does that mean? It means if we hover over our media two or the image that we want and press control spacebar, we now have all of these different nodes that we can use and add onto our image. So say, for example, we wanted to add a color correction. I can type in CC, add a color corrector node, and it will place it after the media in node so it's going to go after the media in node but before it goes into the planar tracker and that basically means we can do stuff like this i can adjust the hue if i wanted to i could bring down the gain the gamma i can literally adjust any of the parameters to try my best to match it closely it's not going to work now because i messed it up but closely match it towards the skin color and the environment you can really spend a lot of time literally manipulating this and again it will still track to the surface in fact you don't need to stop there you can add a bunch more nodes for example drag this down control space bar let's add a glow <laughs> and as you can see we've actually added <laughs> a soft glow to our image and in fact you can actually manipulate and keyframe any of these parameters anytime you see a diamond here on the right hand side you can keyframe these parameters so if i press one here i move forward in frame I change it down it's going to automatically keyframe and as you can see actually change it and we have all of these parameters we've got the keyframe parameters here we've got spline but that's not this video we're not going to get too in depth of it the next and final fun example that i'm going to show you is actually this image here because if you saw in the beginning of the video we actually had this <laughs> which is pepe in the uh, tea mug or coffee depends on what they're drinking and um yeah so let me show you how i've done it so we're going to go over to this footage here Gonna click the fusion tab gonna be the exact same process i'm just gonna speed through this <laughs> we're gonna drag that in drag the green into drag the gray into the green of the planar tracker click onto the planar tracker and just position <laughs> this looks crazy like <laughs> i mean we could actually leave it here if you want this effect we could really <laughs> <laughs> we could leave it here but no no that's not what we're going to do you want to put it inside the mug so go back to the planar tracker and yeah this seems to <laughs> this seems to be okay i think the only difficult thing about this is getting the perspective right because of course you've got these corner pin controls but if you don't necessarily have something like a square to align something to like this it's gonna be quite difficult to place this in and remember, this doesn't work for just images. It works for videos too, any services, walls, cars, you name it. I think this looks okay. Let's play it back and see. Yeah, that's not bad. He's in a coffee cup. Tea cup. And again, we're going to add nodes. So to get the effect I done last time, what I done is I selected onto our image and then afterwards press control space bar, typed in ripple. because I know that that is a node that we can use. And just like that, you can see that it has ripples here, but it's not animating. So on the right hand side next to the inspector, we go down, it says animate right here. And as you can see, it's animating in real time. You have all of these parameters here that you can adjust. So the shine size. And again, you can keyframe this if you wanted to. You have the speed of the animation. If you want to make it fast, slower, more realistic. You've got ripples here, you can enable, disable. <laughs> This is pretty interesting. You can have some really good fun with this. And again, this isn't all you can do. You can keep adding nodes. I can add a color corrector node right now. I can change the hue on the fly if I wanted to. Adjust the contrast, adjust the gain. Darken up a bit. Change the colors to better match the footage. <laughs> and just like that, my friends, you now know how to stick objects onto any surface of individual Resolve 17. And it works for anything. For example, this car here, we track the surface of this car, we put the Avengers logo. You might remember this footage from the Power Window video, but literally look, we've stuck. <laughs>
<laughs> we've stuck the Avengers logo onto the car. And even though we're moving towards these two here, it's literally tracking with the footage and it looks pretty good. So to close this out, let us read some comments. Okay, so we have a comment from Jamie Coates and Jamie says, I'm not sure if I told you before, but you are an excellent, actually brilliant teacher. A natural combined of hard work equals you. <laughs> Thank you so much, my friends. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. We have a comment from Double Double. Double says, such a beautiful video. Thanks a billion. Thank you, Double Double, for watching. Cool Guys Inc. says, I think this just saved me about $40 in lap packs. Thank you so much, subscribed. Are uh, they talking about my uh, <laughs> color grade like your favorite film? Yes, you have indeed. Say $40 or you can uh, get my lots. Link in the description. 50% <laughs> off. Alan Smith says, excellent video. You may want to check out the Anim Curves Modifying Fusion. Yes, I've actually seen that. I'm actually making a video towards that as well. There's so many things I need to make a video on. There's not enough time, but definitely I will cover it. Thank you very much for that. Jonathan says, thank you for this. Thank you, Jonathan. And lastly, Chrissy says, you are genius. Really clear, concise explanation and so much content. Thank you for explaining this as I couldn't work out how to combine all the elements in the workflow. I'm currently working on my final collection for university. So this really helps as we're doing it digitally. This is a lifesaver. Chrissy, thank you so much. And I'm really, really glad that I was able to help at least just one person. Good luck on your final collection university. And uh, yeah, I'd actually love to see it when it's done. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please share, subscribe, comment, like. If you want more tutorials like this, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Black Pack 50% off. Come support me. Bye-bye.